All right, everyone, it's time for the occult video number 292. We should return to folkish ways. Now, for, I, I thought of this the other day. I was thinking of, of Midsummer, which I watched with Liz. Uh, and then I got to think about, like, Wicker Man and, you know, movies that are at least topically similar. I know they have totally divergent plot lines and purposes, but, you know, sort of the paganistic aspect of things. And I was thinking to myself, it, it's funny because we always look at, like, like folkish medicine folklore, superstition, and stuff, we say, well, that's silly shit. It's not even real. But then when we look at the evolution of things like medicine or culture over time, is it really any different, or have we just changed superstitions? For example, dietary advice. The dietary advice that your parents got is not the same as the dietary advice you get. Margarine was considered good for you. Then we realized it created free radicals was actually terrible for you, and it's better to just eat butter. Red meat was the enemy. Now we realize, no, it's actually processed meat that's full of, of corn binders and shit. A good steak or something like that is actually relatively healthy for most people. Um, you, you had eggs were the devil. Now eggs are a good protein source. Salt was evil. Then it was okay. Now it's, well, it depends on the amount. Sugar. Sugar was marketed in the 50s as being good for you. Now, back when people had less access to sugar and most people rarely had things that were sweet other than fruit for the most part, some molasses maybe. Uh, when it was a scarce sort of thing, a little sugar could give you an energy boost and so this was considered positive. Now we realize that refined sugar, you really you shouldn't be eating any of it. <laughs> you, you should literally eat no refined sugar products. Carbs. Nobody had a problem with carbs. Recently, of course, people discovered magically that you know, certain carbs weren't good for you, rot your teeth and shit like that. With regards just to dietary advice, every generation, 180s, half of the stuff from the previous generation, you've got, you've got leeches uh, within medicine. Leeches were considered, you know, leechcraft was considered superstition. Now we say, well, you can have medical leeching uh, as long as they're, they're you know, lab grown and so forth, since they're sterile. Maggots, uh, maggots on wounds are used to cleanse dead flesh away. The idea of maggots in wounds was disgusting 20 or 30 years ago. And no, 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 we need to remove it surgically and use antiseptics and stuff like that because it's clean. Maggots aren't clean. Well, then we realized you could, again, grow them in a lab. They were perfectly clean and they're way better than a scalpel. Because of this, since the medicine we're proclaiming now as true or top of the line 50 years from now will be considered witch doctoring and voodoo, why even bother having this mod? I, I'm not arguing against modern medicine in the general sense, but I'm arguing against like fad dieting, um, conventions within medicine outside of the realm of like genetics and shit. Some of the things that we're doing now, they're trying to uh, bioengineer mosquitoes to wipe out the populations to prevent malaria. How long is it before we realize this has some sort of disastrous medical or environmental impact? I think the folkish ways are better when people were living in harmony with nature to a greater degree. Now, I'm not doing the noble savage mythology. The pagans also butchered one another routinely. The idea of the pagans is they put on their robes and they, they had took some mead and then went out into the forest to hallucinate. No, they also got ready for battle and butchered children and you know, they held keep people captive, slavery and shit. Uh, they weren't as enlightened as, as you'd believe if you listened to many neo-pagans. They, they were not a hippie society. They're closer to Varg than, uh, <laughs> they, closer to Varg than to the Asatru Folk Assembly. And here's the thing. The folkish ways, the real ones, are better. Behaviorally, culturally, uh, we're, not, we're still just as superstitious. It's just that now it's superstitions involving electronics and shit like that, as opposed to not stepping on a crack. Give people back those folk traditions, they'd arguably be happier. Also, there's more cohesion in both a cultural and civic sense, as opposed to the sort of globalized system that we now use today. I pointed out, within the occult, this isn't just pagan or folkish, this is the occult in general. It's being promulgated by the internet. But while you're getting higher access to every piece of occult literature that ever existed, you're getting less access to physical books, you know, actually owned items as opposed to proprietary zeros and ones on a server somewhere that you simply access, you rent through your Kindle or whatever. Um, that's less. You get more exposure to the rituals and goings-ons of thousands of years of history, but you have less people actually participating in it. They're, they're just on their computer. 
You get more interactions between people of similar mind within socio-religious groups, within spiritual groups, but less in-person contact between them. The same thing that could draw people together is actually driving them apart in some ways. I think that we should forsake that notion uh, and go back to more folkish ways. I, I've summed up like my idea of utopia is a treehouse with really fast Wi-Fi, <laughs> in other words. Uh, a really great permaculture garden, which has a very strong uh, internet connection. That's basically the world I think that we should create. One that's also, also a world that's cosmopolitan, but in which people hold to their cultures, defend them vigorously, promulgate them, and not just in digital form. Of course, you get another Carrington event, you'll have a few problems with all of the, uh, the uh, cyber shit that you have. Uh, some of it's shielded, a lot of it's not. Your oven may still work, and your microwave might turn itself on and burn your house to the ground. Could be a big problem. Technology, another great example. With each march forward in technology, we make things potentially more efficient, like with the online world. 20 years ago, you're like talking in a primitive text-only chat room. Now you can real-time, in video, audio, whatever, send files, send money, do everything you can just with a smartphone. You know, a smartphone that has more processing power than 10 laptops did 20 years ago. But at the same time, while communication is more efficient, it's also increasingly throttled by governments, by social activist groups, so-called, and by the tech firms themselves. Well, we're doing the wrong thing. Ultimately, people need more communication, and people should go back to a more folkish outlook. Uh, but part of this is just I hate cities and shit like that. I like the fact that I have a little garden now as opposed to just a balcony. We'll put it that way. Uh, people need to get back to the land uh, and self-improve. Even with regards to like the COVID crisis, the biggest comorbidity for COVID is being fat. Well, you know, you could save a lot of lives by just telling people, why don't you try to lose just 10 pounds? Even that marginal reduction in your weight can potentially, it takes pressure off your vascular system, off your respiratory system. Instead of doing what we are doing now with the, with the newfangled technology and shit like that, which clearly is having a sporadic impact, we should go back to, the, to 100 years ago and give the medical advice of that day. Get sunshine, a good diet, get some exercise, lose some weight. Problem solved. Take some fucking vitamin supplements. That's about all. Peace out.